kia ora everyone. Uh, here we are in Waimangaroa. This is where I've made my home. This is where I've uh, created my, uh, probably my final masterpiece. Who knows, maybe I've got another one in me. But I'd just like to take you all on a little bit of a journey today. We're just going to have a walk around the park. Uh, we might take 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, who knows. But uh, we'll have a walk around. I'll just explain what I've been doing for lockdown. We've been in lockdown for a couple of months here and uh, I've been able to achieve so much so I'd like to share that with everybody so come on and we'll go and have a walk around first of all we'll head to uh, the coffee house this little coffee house uh, sort of just uh, grew here and it's very very successful a lot of people like coffee luckily I don't drink it also sells beautiful handmade pies so I eat a few of those uh, these sculptures here represent uh, the Land Guardian. So uh, as you can see, this one's a beautiful uh, big greenstone one. This one's made from Totra down the beach. We'll get away from here because it's noisy and roady. We'll just say, hey John. Here's John, he's the coffee guy. Always a big smile from John. And Bev. Hey. Yep. See us later. And. Uh, we're just building a new coffee house here. You can have a look inside. This is going to be the new coffee house for Bev and uh, she'll be making all her pies right here on the property. So I think people are going to love it. You know, sort of being able to come here and get their pie, their coffee, and then hopefully come through into the garden. So uh, I'll take you through. See, we've created a bit of a, a space around here with uh, trees, ferns, uh, and this is where people come to eat their pie and drink their coffee. Uh, we've tried to make it as wild and west coast as we can. And I think uh, it's very easy to do that on the west coast because everything just grows like crazy. So uh, what we're going to do is now go through into my garden. Uh, we'll take you through that uh, gate over here. And we'll just slip on through. We'll slip on through into Woody's reality. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to have a look at this. This is a, a waterfall. I've had so many beautiful uh, uh, big greenstone boulders that people have given me over my lifetime and I've collected. And I've uh, tried to use them all in uh, features around the place. You see here that uh, some of the big boulders are in this waterfall and uh, you know with a bit of water on them you can see they're just uh, totally beautiful. I also have the uh, 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 Rangi and Papa and Rangi here sculpture which is the Earth Mother and uh, with the water and the sculpture it's uh, kind of a little spiritual place that I can come and sit and often I'll come and sit down here at night time and have a little fire and uh, even spend the night here, you know, listening to the bubbling stream. It's all done with electricity though. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not really me. Uh, it's not really nature, but it works for me. Yeah, and uh, on this side, we've got Hine. She uh, welcomes everyone in with her uh, beautiful spirit. She's uh, reaching up to the sky. She was created uh, uh, Oh, I forgot. I forget all the gods' names, but she was created from the sand, and you can see she's reaching, reaching up for the uh, sky there. Uh, she's beautiful uh, sculpture to me, and got a bit of a story. We lost her for a while, but we've got her back now, so she's happy to be amongst us all again. Everything in this garden's planted amongst uh, plants that are native to the area, so they're all just growing like mad. My idea is to try to create a sculpture garden uh, that's nestled in amongst the native fauna and the, and the native uh, birds can live amongst it, the native fish can live amongst it and uh, people can come and they can enjoy nature and art all together. Uh, so that's my aim here and I've, I've reached a certain point, I've, I've sort of got it to a degree now where I'm really really happy to uh, sort of show people uh, what I've achieved and uh, hopefully from that they might come and have a look themselves. West Coast is always very beautiful, even when it's raining, it's beautiful. 
especially here at the sculpture park. <clears throat> well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, welcome a few special people because over my lifetime, a few people have really helped me. Uh, and I'm going to try to get this video to them because a lot of people have helped me in my, uh, uh, my road to getting to this point. This point I'm very, very happy, so you know, a lot of those people contributed to my happiness. Uh, I'd like to, we've got a VIP uh, I'd like to uh, introduce, and that's my great, oh, it's my mother, which of course is my grandchildren's great, great, great grandmother. So that's a pretty great thing to have in our family. So uh, I'd like to welcome grandma. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, my ex-wife Cheryl, mother of my children. I'd like to welcome uh, my children and my grandchildren. Uh, I'd like to welcome Nisha, Monica. I'd like to welcome Ethan and uh, Piper and Dylan and Kira uh, to my sculpture park today and just have a look around and enjoy it with me. Uh, hopefully you'll get that down one day. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'd like to do. I'd also like to thank all my ex-lovers. I'd also like to thank uh, all the people that have helped me on my way. I've had some pretty crazy experiences and uh, done some silly crazy things, but it's all worked out. Here it is, welcome. Yeah, one of my reasons I've come down the west coast here to live is because of these guys. These guys are called the uh, Marmaku Fern or King Fern and uh, they'll grow 20 meters tall, huge. They're one of the tallest ferns in the whole world. And this is where they live. So I've brought, come down here to plant my art amongst these ferns. Uh, so I've planted a lot of these in the last five years, so they're just coming to uh, sort of their fruition now. I've planted a lot of these guys too, which are lance woods, very ancient tree, but I've planted over a hundred around here and I think they're just gonna see so beautiful. I don't know if anyone uh, notices, but there's a, a goat up here, very capricious looking animal. Uh, I sort of this goat to me represents me a bit because uh, I feel like a bit of a goat and uh, I've always thought pastures would be greener in the next paddock, you know, and I've always sort of rushed off to the next paddock. But uh, here, I think I'm in the right paddock, you know, I don't really want to go to greener pastures anymore. So uh, I'm sort of very happy here and I'm very happy on the West Coast. So this goat here is sort of my representation of uh, being here on the West Coast, being happy. So. Uh, he looks good up there, and then I've got a sort of a steampunk light up there, which uh, which is going to light up in the in the night time with an orange glow. So that's going to be beautiful. If we have a look around here, we'll notice that some of the big sculptures are uh, just around the place. But uh, in dispersed amongst them, I've created some uh, small areas of uh, glass cabinets or. Uh, different cabinets so so people can see some of these sculptures without kids sort of getting and hassling them and stuff you know so uh, some of these sculptures I've made are from bronze and have taken me sometimes weeks you know to get everything perfect and right to be able to do this it's taken me many years this is probably the pinnacle of my uh, you know abilities really to be able to do something like this with the scarf flying the uh, coattails flying so uh, and I've got in here, I've got uh, some driftwood sculptures and some of the little birds I make from my scrap woods. You know, the little fantails. So, uh, and then at night time, close them up, weather doesn't affect them. Uh, I've got a number of these cabinets around here. They're, they're, what they are, they're more like a little village of uh, people to me because each one has a sort of different... Uh, I think you call them dioramas. Each one has a different scene in it. You might notice this one here, if you can see it through the camera lens, might be difficult. Uh, this one here has uh, some woodworkers from the old days, uh, sort of chopping down the trees. There's a blacksmith over here. There's an ax man here. And this is what represents what it used to be like on the West Coast. Uh, you know, only 150 years ago, they were cutting down these beautiful trees. 
and building houses all everywhere, sending it off to all over the world. And now we've hardly got any left. So uh, the stuff we do have left is very, very, very special. Uh, and that's why I like to make sculptures to uh, celebrate that uh, era. Uh, here, I've got all the flying animals. I've got all the little fantails here. Very hard to see because of the uh, glare, but uh, I, I, I sort of think the flying animals of the sea is the stingray. So I've got the, uh, the fantails and the stingray all incorporated together here. Uh, I, I love stingrays. You might notice that, you know, wherever you put your hand down, there might be a damn stingray. Like, uh, have a look here. See, there's a stingray here. You know, can you see it? He's uh, beautiful with his back. And, uh, and then I've tried to, uh, you know, put some of my little bronze sculptures in different places around the place. Some of my driftwood stuff that I find on the beach and I just add a little bit to it like you can see I've just added a little face and a couple of boobies and we've got a nice little sculpture. Uh, oh, I love this area this is where I often sit with my chair and uh, smoke my uh, old to man's tobacco pipe uh, and I'm wanting to build a little waterfall here if you have a look here what's going to happen is when you put the water out that's going to go into that bowl, you see. So I'm going to make a waterfall that'll just run the water down into that bowl. And uh, this is all this is all greenstone here. So uh, the more you touch it, you know, the more it uh, just comes uh, the beautiful colours through. So uh, yeah, this is a piece of art in the making, but it looks beautiful already. I love how this uh, copper tree has decided to die you know, and it's come and it's sort of laid itself here in the little greenstone bowl. So uh, yeah, it's really, really special. Uh, I've planted lots and lots of trees around this place. Lots of them are natives. The native trees I've planted are all for the birds and for the bees because uh, I think that uh, it's the only way we're gonna get our birds back is by getting rid of the cats, pest species, and starting to grow these beautiful trees. Look at this thing, eh? You know, I've been uh, watching this for years just growing from a little seed and uh, magic. Uh, <clears throat> I'll show you here what we've got as a bit of a area. Uh, it's one of the uh, trees I really love is this tree over here. This is a, a weeping elm, but in the summer, I often put a chair under there and uh, you know I sit under there and it's got like a tent, it's just so beautiful. You can see the nasturtiums are sort of taking it over at the moment, but I just love nasturtiums anyway with their orange flowers. And I've planted these red trees here to sort of hide that area a bit. And uh, I'm so enjoying the super beautiful colors that they're producing, eh? Uh, we've got a bit of a bridge going over our stream here. We've created this stream here uh, the stream used to go through the middle of the property, but we've actually created this stream with a big digger and we've made it go through so we can create, build a pond over here. Uh, this here is a pretty ancient old canoe. It was built by uh, Mark Rayner uh, many, many years ago and uh, I've preserved it for the last 20 years, I suppose, keeping it out of the dry. It's still good. But, uh, you know, I think if you had it in the weather, it would just rot away fairly quickly. But it's a pretty damn beautiful thing, eh? Uh, so what we'll do... Oh, look, and here's some... Here's some half woman, half horses. Centure. And this one here, he's supposed to have a man with an arrow, shooting an arrow on his back. So, uh, yeah, and I've... Oh, look, there's another sculpture over here. There's one here. Yeah, there's one up there. That one's called uh, stepping out, and it kind of means, uh, you know, sort of stepping out of your mould, just doing something a bit different. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to Maui. And Maui's uh, doing something special over here. He's pulling up the, uh, 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 the North Island, so we'll head over here and I'll tell you a bit about what's happening there. Uh, but on the way, I've just noticed that there's another diorama here. This one's uh, got all the mad, crazy musicians that I've made over the years. Like there's the horned bagpiper, the crazy woman dancing with her sword, the violinist, there's Pan himself over here with the beautiful syrinx. 
look over there, <laughs> there's a woman who's a harp playing herself, pretty amazing. Uh, and there's some pan flutes and stuff. Have a look through here and you might see, uh, you know, you can see the pond and you can see all the sculptures and stuff. So, uh, yes, uh, kind of, and here, uh, see there's a tiny little, tiny little area here with a little bit of glass in it. But look what's in there. There's a bronze tiger skull. There's a, um, an ax with a whalebone handle. There's a flute carved by a master carver. There's a bone flute. There's some uh, beautiful silver jewelry. And uh, there's just magic things everywhere. Look, look at this woman. This one's made by a guy named Ken Blum. And uh, I've put this patina on with a bit of gold leaf. And uh, she just, wow, so beautiful. And uh, let's go and have a look on our bridge. <laughs> you might notice that there's a lot of greenstone bowls around the place. Uh, I just love them when they're full of water. They're, uh, I suppose I was brought up a Catholic, so I, I kind of believe in holy water, but I didn't believe in their holy water. I kind of, this is holy water to me. It's come out of the sky and it's come and settled in this greenstone bowl. So uh, this is fucking beautiful. Uh, and a lot of these big greenstone sculptures were created by a guy named Pete Tulfery. And uh, he's done a lot of these big sculptures over the past and I've been lucky enough to be able to buy and barter some. So I've got a few around the place that uh, he's carved. Uh, we've had a guy here named Joe, the filmmaker, and over his uh, lockdown, he's been helping around the place. One of his jobs he chose was making this bridge, which is pretty special. So uh, he worked for, I don't know how many days, you know, sort of carting wood, cutting stuff up by hand and uh, he created this bridge and uh, the surprise was that after he created it uh, uh, someone came and moved in we found that uh, a beautiful eel thought that it might make a beautiful home under her, under the bridge so we've got a fantastic eel living here now and her name's Dawn so come on we'll see if we can find her This is a really beautiful place to sit. Often sit here and have my breakfast because the sun comes up over here, you see. Uh, I've tried to create a native area here to hide that uh, tin house next door. Uh, these will all grow over the next few years, the ferns and the shrubs and the native trees. Uh, one of the beautiful things I think is, uh, is this bowl. Uh, Joe managed to carry this over here. This is a huge damn greenstone bowl. Look at it. He managed to carry it over, you know, and uh, place it here. So uh, yeah, I think it'll stay here forever, pretty much. I don't think anyone will shift it. Can't see Dawn today. I think she's uh, probably, uh, I, I think she might be on hibernation leave. You know, I haven't seen her. She's been very, very scarce the last day or two. Maybe if I put a bit of meat in there, we would probably see her, but uh, we'll, keep the, we'll keep the tour going. Uh, what I was going to tell you though, is uh, down here we've got the stingray. That uh, represents the North Island in Maori mythology. And uh, what, what the story was, is that uh, Maui with his brothers uh, went out fishing one day and there was a lot of hunger around the uh, camp, the tribe. And uh, so Maui uh, got a special magical fish hook off his grandmother. It was made from her jawbone. And, uh, and what uh, he did was he went out there in the waka and he caught a huge, great big uh, fish and he was fighting and pulling it out of the water. And, uh, and then what happened was when he got it to the surface, he saw that it was a stingray. And uh, all the brothers were so hungry, they uh, jumped on the back with their, uh, with their stone tools and they cut it up. And that's why the mountains are all so jagged and rugged on the back of the North Island, along the sort of ridge line. If you look at the North Island, it's kind of the shape of a stingray, so it's an amazing myth. And, uh, but yeah, this sculpture up here is Maui. Uh, he's kind of probably one of the most special sculptures to me because uh, he's been, we, a friend of mine, Kenny Blum and I carved him. And then we've had the most beautiful Maori people come along and uh, do, uh, you know, carving, master carvers and things and put their piece into it. So it's a really special, special, uh, piece of work to me and uh, I think it's found its home. 
I think this is the best place for it, in the middle of this lake. And uh, with some eels, amazing eels, <laughs> sort of circular, circular, circling it and looking after it. So, uh, yep, very, very happy to have uh, Maui here at home. Uh, I'm a crazy mower guy. I just love mowers. And uh, so I've got a couple of mower bronzes here. And uh, this one over here, look at his head, he's got a beautiful uh, skeleton. I really, 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 really think he's really crazy. Uh, so yeah, I've done a little display here, probably hard to see with the uh, sun and stuff. Uh, shiny. Here's a, look, if you look, you'll find carvings all over the place here because this one's mother and child. This one's done by Kenny Blum too. It hasn't even had the, uh, it hasn't been cleaned up yet. It's just straight out of the furnace really. Uh, here's one of my little jewellery cabinets. See at night time, I just close it up like this. And, uh, but here's some of my landscapes. I don't know if you can see them. They're made from jade, power, gold pearl, and all the most special things that are in New Zealand. Uh, here's, a, here's another, here's another one of Pete Talfrey's uh, uh, greenstone sculptures. Look at the eye on this one, you know, it's uh, so beautifully polished and this little bit of, uh, you know, sort of surface texture carving is so incredible too, you know. It's uh, nice that people can touch these ones. They're sort of like uh, amazing things to be able to touch, aren't they? Uh, so yeah, I, d I don't know, did we go to, uh, <laughs> look at this, this is a, you might look like just a fern from the bush, but it's actually uh, been, uh, it's been cast in bronze. The reason we've been able to do that is through <laughs> many years of experience in getting the right temperatures to be able to burn out that inside a sort of uh, ceramic shell and then pour the molten bronze in. So here's some wood carving. Now most of this stuff is uh, just from down the beach. <laughs> It, uh, you know, I find these beautiful pieces of wood and they represent to me nature. And then I think nature spirits. And then when I think nature spirits, I think this is nature spirit. It's kind of like a beautiful female form. It looks more like a sort of reed or a sort of a plant than a woman, you know, but uh, you can see the female form in there. So uh, yeah, I kind of really do like the female form. It's often represented in my carving. Old motorbikes, I love them too. And, uh, so yeah, I think that's a pretty good walk around the park, wasn't it, uh, young Joe? What do you think? You know, we've got uh, another sculpture here. This is, uh, of course, Hine in bronze, and, uh, and I've sort of co-married her to a nice root from down on the beach, and uh, so yeah, she represents pretty lot to me. Uh, this is another one with uh, one of the motorbikes. This is a very old motorbike over there, 1924. I've tried to represent a bit of age in that one. I've tried to make the guy look pretty old too. And uh, yeah, he looks pretty ancient, all right. Uh, I'm gonna get some nice little candles for here, you know, so that we can have nice uh, candles on still nights and stuff. You might not notice that around the place, I'm uh, building some tables and things. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to use all of the materials that are uh, here. I'm trying to re, uh, what's the word? I'm trying to reuse the materials that people have thrown away. Like all these uh, pieces of wood are old bridge timbers. All these pieces of wood are from the uh, beach. Uh, you know, there, there's old wire that I've made into candelabras. Uh, you know, some of the old tin and these old boxes, they're just made from secondhand stuff, eh? Look, there's scratches on everything. But that's the way I like it. You know, my art's not perfect. You know, my life's not perfect. And, uh, you know, definitely this is not perfect, but it's as perfect as I'm going to get, I think, and it's as perfect as I'm going to be able to make a life around me. So uh, thank you very much to all my beautiful, beautiful uh, friends I've had over the years, and I love you all, uh, you know, especially those ones I cohabitated with for many, many years. And, uh, you know, we'll meet again and come and see me down on the West Coast sometime. Kia ora. Big hugs after COVID-19, eh?
Uh, kia ora. I'd just like to uh, sort of just put the last little bit of a touch on this film. I, I'd like to thank so many people. I just can't go through all their names. Eh? You know, there's been so many uh, amazing people in my life who have helped me. But uh, I was lucky enough, uh, you know, when the lockdown came, I was lucky enough to get trapped in here with a uh, filmmaker, Joe Foster. And uh, he's, he's uh, made a, a film which is going to blow everyone's mind, I think. So uh, this is just a little prelude to the, uh, to the big film. But, uh, but I just, as I said, I want to tell everyone, thank you very much. And total love goes out to everyone, eh? Total love, you know, to all my whanau, all my friends, everybody, you know. Love you guys.